I'm John Norris sitting in for Kurt Loder. This is The Week in Rock. The AIDS epidemic has claimed the life of another major talent, this time from the world of art. Keith Haring, the best known and best loved pop artist of the 1980s, died in his sleep early Friday morning at his home in New York of AIDS-related complications. The 31-year-old Herring left an indelible mark on the art world with his instantly recognizable graffiti-inspired works, of which the best known were The Radiant Baby, The Barking Dog, which sometimes took on a half-human form, and A Zapping Spacecraft. Originally trained in Pittsburgh, the birthplace of another pop art giant, Andy Warhol, Herring moved to New York City in 1978, enrolled in the School of Visual Arts, and introduced his clever expressionist graphic designs to the subways and walls of the city. That street art soon found a following among Manhattan's downtown dealers, and prices for herring canvases shot to tens of thousands of dollars. Last year, an ambulance chaser mentality sent those prices into the six-figure range after herring publicly admitted he had the AIDS virus in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. He had been taking the AIDS, AIDS treatment drug AZT, and according to a spokeswoman, he had been holding his own against the disease until a couple of weeks ago when he was struck by laryngitis and flu-like symptoms. Last fall, MTV News interviewed Keith for our Decade special, and he bravely talked about how learning to live with AIDS had changed the way he looked at death and dying. The thing that surprised me a lot is that um, you find ways to adapt to it somehow. I mean, I never thought that I would be able to deal with death or even be able to think about death in the way that I do now because I've seen it a whole different way. I mean, it, it, after having the experience of really watching um, watching death, and especially um, because, unfortunately, AIDS is very, um, the disease itself is, a, can be very painful and very, um, very ugly disease. I mean, it's not, it's not pretty, it's not, it's not um, painless, and it's not quick, and so there's a lot of sort of suffering that goes with the thing, and there's a lot of sort of pain that you've got to sort of deal with, psychological and physical pain. Herring won many friends and admirers in the music world, and among the performers he created works for were Duran Duran and Grace Jones. Even more significantly, he often used his work for positive social statements, including a well-known anti-apartheid poster, the cover of the 1988 album A Very Special Christmas to benefit the Special Olympics, and a safe sex campaign to combat AIDS. Ironically, tomorrow night at the Charles Lucian Gallery in New York, Herring's latest show was to open, two series of silk screen works inspired by the works of author William Burroughs. Our dealer, George Mulder, who's behind the exhibit, says the show will go on and run for a month of the gallery as planned, but he did say the opening would be low-key.